Amen. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I'm just, amen, honored every time I have the opportunity to stand before the people of God and share in the word of the Lord. I've said it this weekend and I'll say it again. The word of the Lord always blesses me. Amen. It is a, it is a wonderful privilege to be able to open the pages of the word. Amen. And know that God is speaking. Amen. Directly to me. I feel bad for people who in the word of God see a distant God. But when I open the pages, I recognize that God is talking to me. And whatever he's written therein, amen, is good for me today. It'll strengthen me. It'll encourage me. It'll give me what I need to make it, amen, through, amen, whatever comes my way. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Oh, tell somebody there is a word from the Lord. And I am a lover of the word of God. I brought mine. You got yours? Come on, hold that power up tonight. Thank God. Amen. Because everything else is going down but the word of our God. I want to call your attention, amen, to the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Amen. And I want to invite you to the fourth and the fifth verses. That's 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verses 4 and 5. Amen. And when you have it, say amen. amen. Read what the Bible says. For the weapons of our warfare. For the weapons of our warfare. Now there's a war going on. Amen. You are in the midst of a warfare right now. Don't look like it to the natural or naked eye, but that's where you are. Amen. Every day that you rise, you're going to rise and you're going to have to fight your way through that day. Amen. Because we are always going to have an adversary who's bent on turning us around. Amen. But the Bible says that even though we're in a warfare, the weapons that we fight with are not carnal weapons. Read. But mighty through God. But they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. To the pulling down of strongholds. Read. Casting down imagination. Casting down imagination. And every high thing uh -huh. that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Mm. And bringing into captivity. And bringing into captivity. Liberty, every thought every thought to the obedience of Christ to the obedience of Christ read that again verse 4 and 5 for the weapons of our warfare the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God but they are still mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds what is the end of using these effective weapons he said it is to the pulling down of strongholds uh -huh. Casting down imagination. Then he says, cast down imaginations. And every high thing. And everything. Uh -huh. That exalted itself. That will try to exalt itself. Against the knowledge of God. And there are a lot of things that are going to try to challenge the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity. But we bring into captivity. Every thought. Every thought. To the obedience of Christ. To the obedience of Christ. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Amen. I want to talk about strongholds and imaginations. Mm -hmm. Just look at somebody and say strongholds and imaginations. Hey, oh, some of y'all ain't saying that. Look at somebody else and tell them strongholds and imaginations. Family, tonight, amen, uh, whether uh, people are willing to admit it or not, uh, every one of us uh, has a storm that we've got to go through. I talked about it, amen, Sunday night in Garland. Lord, we had some church in Garland Sunday night. Amen. Uh, every ship has a storm to go through. 
Uh, we won't get through life. We won't escape, amen, without uh, sometimes life putting its hands on us. Life is going to try, amen, to, to, to bully us if we allow it. Amen. There's a warfare that we are going to have to fight. We got to engage in it. But according to the scriptures, before we go into it, we can face it with the full assurance that when we come out of it, we are going to be the victors. Are you hearing me? Amen. I don't want you to think that, amen, we as the people of God have a defeatist mentality. We don't have that kind of mindset, amen, that says, poor me and woe is me. No, amen. Even though we may have some things that we've got to face, some things we've got to encounter, amen, some situations and circumstances that we would not choose to go through if it was left up to us, amen, God has already given us the assurance that we are going to be the victors. I don't, I don't want you to think that you are at the mercy of the enemy because that's never the case. Amen. God didn't leave you out there. Amen. And just walk away from you. And now you are at the mercy of whatever the enemy's will is in this hour. That devil is a liar. Amen. I told you Sunday morning the Bible said we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And that's where, amen, we've got to understand amen, God wants to meet us. He wants to meet us at that place where the promise of God, amen, meets our faith and God is there able to bring us through whatever it is that we face in this life. We've got to know that our mind is a very interesting place. I've said it before. Amen. Do you know that with your mind you can go around the world? I don't care if your body is stationary in one place. Your mind has an ability to think on higher things and that, amen, is what separates us, amen, from brute beasts because, amen, our minds work at a higher level and so since our minds work at a higher level amen and since our minds are so you know scientists say that there's not a computer in the world amen that's able to outmatch the human mind and it is there brothers and sisters where we face every challenge that the enemy is going to throw at us I don't care amen if you're sick in your body I want you to know the devil wants that sickness to even affect your mind he he wants to fight you, amen, in a place that you cannot see. He wants to fight you in an area, amen, that controls everything else that you do because he knows that the Bible declares that as a man thinketh, so is a he. And if the devil can fight you, amen, and get you to thinking about yourself in a crazy way, amen, then how can you expect to gain the victory when you can't even see coming out of this? Amen. But listen, I don't care how hard life gets you've got to always be able to see yourself rising above the circumstance now y'all gonna get quiet or y'all gonna help me preach tonight touch somebody and tell them neighbor you got to see yourself better amen better than what you're going through better than what you're in better than what you have amen you've always got to be able to envision yourself amen in a better situation than the one that you find yourself in and now and we've often talked about the fact that the devil loves to play games with people's minds Lord yea he do and there are a whole lot of people amen they're just bound in a game amen of the mind I told you amen it's all a mind game that's what the devil wants to play amen he wants to paint you a picture not only of yourself amen but he's the accuser of the brethren amen I told you he'll accuse you to God and then that rascal will come to you and accuse God to you amen have you asking where's God what did God do and what did I do wrong how could God treat me like that. That's nothing more than a mind game. And you've got to be able to see through that because that's where the enemy does his best work. Because if he can keep you from exercising faith that believes that God is able amen, then you'll sit right there in the middle of a circumstance longer than you have to when all you really got to do is have faith in God. And you know that's how the devil loves he loves, amen, for the people of God to have all of this power, to have a God that cares.
as a God that's concerned about us but here we are crying and complaining and acting like we don't have nobody that really loves us now listen either we're going to trust God or we're not either we're going to believe him for the supernatural and the miraculous or we can hang our faith in the closet amen and just sit down and wait to die but if you know God like I know God amen you can never count God out and I don't care how low life takes you amen it's just taking God hey, oh God y'all getting quiet here all it takes with God is the blink of an eye and God can have you right back up out of that shout in the victory because that's the kind of God that we serve and that's what I come to tell somebody tonight I don't care where you have found yourself you've got to believe that God is still an able God I said I don't care if the doctor says you're going to die you ain't dead yet so that means you've got to believe that God is still an able God y'all show getting quiet I'm looking amen trying to find at least 65 witnesses that believe that God is still able to do what he said he could do uh, amen so we've got to know that this is why the Bible encourages us to guard our minds because your mind is a serious place yes it is you've got to guard it because if the enemy can gain control of your mind then he'll use your own mind against you and that's the reason why the Bible says we have to take on the mind of Christ. Because our mind sometimes, Lord, that mind will get you in trouble. But if you got the mind of Christ, Oh God, then your whole life is geared towards obedience to whatever God has said. You know what you've got to do in the protecting or the guarding of your mind? You've got to be very selective about what you allow to penetrate your mind. That means, hear this, you got to watch what you read. You got a whole lot of folks just, they, you, they used to tell us you are what you eat. And when it comes down to you uh, and, and your mind, you're going to act out what you put in your mind. You, you, you're feeding your spirit every time you open a book. You are feeding your mind and your mind is going to use what you're putting in it to direct your life. And sometimes we put in so much stuff in our mind, it's the stuff we put there that, that becomes the challenge to us. Well, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm still a firm believer that the children of God, we don't just feed our minds anything. Y'all getting quiet. You, you, you know, you, you got to watch the kind of stuff you read because you're feeding your brain. And, you trying to hold on to God, trying to rebuke yourself, and all you got are romance novels. And so now the devil telling you, look around, everybody got a husband, everybody got a husband, everybody got a man. Even the people in the book got a man. You ain't got nobody. Everybody around you got a man. They all getting married and you still sit. You better watch what you're putting in your mind. Uh huh. Uh huh. You, uh, you, you, you have to watch what you look at. Everything on television ain't for the saints. Now, see, y'all getting quiet. I wish he'd hurry up so I can go out there and see the fireworks. Listen, I ain't worried about the fireworks out there. I'm worried about the fireworks in here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see something explode up in here tonight. Hey, hey, amen. Hey, amen. The devil is alive. You've got to watch what it is that you're looking at. Hey, amen. Because the enemy will cause you to focus on. And you know the thing is, you can watch something so long until it'll burn itself in your mind. And now here you are, hey amen, been watching carnality all day, feeding your mind and doing all that. And then when it's time to jump spiritual, you got 
to sit down and get on your knees and pray for 30 minutes before you can feel God. Listen, it ain't about all of that. You've got to guard your mind. You can't put yourself in a place, amen, where you can't reach heaven at a moment's notice. How in the world are you going to lay hands on the sick after you just got through watching foolishness? How y'all getting quiet here? How you going to lay hands on somebody or pray somebody through to the Holy Ghost and you still got to get spiritual again because you done fed yourself all of this carnality then when there's a need here you go trying to get now you don't even feel God amen because God ain't nowhere around you got to watch it. Amen. You know what the Bible says. Psalms 101 and 3 says, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. You got to watch what I'm looking at. And a lot of people say, Child, that means TV. That's why I don't have no TV. Because the Bible said, don't set no wicked thing before your eyes. But they'll get on the internet all day. There's more wickedness on the internet than you'll ever find on TV. Y'all getting quiet here. Amen. So it doesn't matter whether it's on TV, whether it's on the internet, whether it's in your house, whether it's in a magazine. Now y'all done got quiet. Amen. Whether it's in a book, you've got to watch it because all of that feeds into your mind. And there are some things that you got to make sure that you keep out of your mind because what's in your mind is going to create the atmosphere in which you live. Amen. By the th- Thoughts that you entertain, oh Lord, y'all getting quiet, and the thoughts that you meditate on, what you're going to entertain is going to create the atmosphere in which you live. So you've got to be very careful to guard your mind. But remember the Bible says we ought to have the mind of Christ. And so brothers and sisters, the reason why Satan wants to infiltrate your mind, it's because he wants to play and in your mind the seeds of a bunch of lies that are going to attack the faith that's necessary in order for you to live for God. Amen. The devil wants to plant first of all doubt in your mind. And you'd be surprised at the number of people now who say they're serving God but who really don't have a real true faith in God at all. Now I'm not talking about testifying because everybody can testify. You got from now, they're professional testifiers. Oh Lord, they can get up, they know how to say it. They know how to end it on a high note. Hey Amen. They know how to change that voice and give that inflection. Had to let the organist know to start playing now because I'm going home. And y'all getting quiet. But when it comes down to living, they don't have the strength to live. Everybody can testify. Everybody can boast. But when all of that is said and done, can you conceive? of higher things or is it that the enemy has so attacked your mind that now it's hard for you even to trust God oh, Lord it's easy amen why are you in church to talk to everybody else but now are you really seriously and secretly struggling with a stronghold is there something that's presenting itself against your mind that's keeping you from truly believing what God has said? And let me say this to every born again believer. You want to have such a relationship with God that you know the voice of God when you hear it. If I know God said it, I don't care who don't like it. I know what he said. And you know what I've experienced? Let me talk to you today. You know what I've experienced? I've experienced a, a group of people now in this last day hour who say, I know God told me that, but apostle, I'm just struggling because it really don't seem like uh, that's what uh, is happening or that's what's going to happen. And I have to ask them again, but did you just tell me that you know that God said it? If you know that God said it, then why does everything else matter? That's a stronghold. That's something that the enemy has erected in your mind to try to keep you from believing God. Amen. But you've got to press through that. Amen. You've got to know, child of God, uh, that if you ever come to the knowledge mm, that God has given us the 
power to push beyond the barriers, you're going to experience some real true deliverance in this hour. I don't care how hard it is for you to believe. Hey Amen. You got to push through that. And you've just got to believe God anyway. I know it's hard. Hey Amen. You know Abraham and Sarah had a word from the Lord. And the Bible said they laughed about it. But it happened just like God has said. And that's what you've got to understand, brothers and sisters. I don't care when God talks to you. If it looks like it'll never happen. If you know that it's God doing the talking, then hold on to the word of God. Because just as sure as God is God, it's going to come to pass in your life. And listen, the devil wants to challenge you. He wants you to focus on circumstances. That's why whenever God tells you you're healed, amen, right after that you're going to get a pain in your body. Because the devil will always try to challenge the word that God just gave him. And I told him Sunday night, after every great victory comes a great challenge. You watch what I tell you. Lord, it seemed like every Sunday that we shouting and giving God the praise. Every time God comes through here and sweeps us, it won't be long after that that the enemy shows up and tries to take everything that God has just given you. Lord, y'all gonna get quiet here. I'm just looking, trying to find at least 12 people that can testify that I've been on the mountaintop Sunday and then by Tuesday night seemed like the mountain was on top of me but I come to tell you it's just a challenge the enemy is trying to weaken your faith but family if you can pull down that stronghold and say I don't care how hard it is to believe I got to believe it I come to tell you there's something stirring in the atmosphere and your season is about to change Yeah. Hey Amen. Your season is about to change. And so that's what the devil is trying to do. Hey Amen. He's trying to bring about a doubt. Uh, but you've got to be convinced, child of God, that the Lord wants you to live free. Are you hearing me? God wants you to live free. And the reason why that's important in this context is because I have found out through personal experiences that battles in the mind are some of the hardest things that you'll ever have to face in your whole life you you, you got to know there's some things you'll face in your mind that'll keep you up at night there are some things that are stir around in your mind and even though it's mental you'll wake up physically tired Lord, ain't nobody experienced that over here. Let me, let, let me come back over to this side. Have you ever had to wrestle with something in your mind, Lord? Y'all get, now they didn't get quiet. Let me come back over here. Hey, man, have you ever had to just wrestle? Hey, man, you turning this thing over in your mind, and it's like a wrestling match. And you're trying to grapple with thoughts and concepts. And look at you. You have worn yourself out because of something that's going on in your mind, in your a house you trying to figure this out can't come to some kind of understanding Lord what is he going to do is my husband going to walk off is he going to come to church and get saved he act like he's interested but then he turns right back around and here you are on your knees wrestling in your mind trying to figure this stuff out but you know what I found out about God that while we're trying to figure it out God has already worked it out so why am I sitting here amen wrestling all night long tell somebody and tell a neighbor get some rest God's got you covered that's what you gotta understand tonight I don't care what kind of battle is going on in your mind I come to tell you that he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps and I said it before I said it again if he up all night long then you ain't got to be take yourself to the house, take a hot shower, get in the bed, pull the covers up around your neck, and say, now I lay me down to sleep. Or oh, to somebody, 
and tell them this is going to be a good night for you. Oh, yes, it is. Because somebody here tonight, you haven't slept in a long time. You've been wrestling in your mind. But Jesus said, Behold, I give you power. And what are you going to do with the power that he gave you? You got to pull it down strong. Do you realize you don't have to put up with this? You don't have to go through this for the next 20 years of your life. See, sometimes we forget who we are and we forget what God has invested in us. We like Moses after God have done all that he did. Come to a Red Sea. And because he never faced this challenge before, he's standing there looking up. And God says, Moses. Looking up ain't going to get you across this sea. Lord, what am I supposed to do? And I love it when God starts asking questions. Because I told you whenever God asks a question, it's not because he don't know the answer. He asks questions to pro... Y'all ain't saying... If God ever asks you a question, he ain't trying to find nothing out. He's trying to provoke you to think about it. And God says to Moses, what you got in your hand? This old thing? Just a stick. But didn't that stick take you down to Egypt? Didn't that same stick swallow up everybody else's sticks? And, and by that same stick, you done worked all kind of signs and wonders. And now here it is. You've gotten in front of this challenge. And you're looking at me trying to figure out what am I going to do. You've got to look at somebody and ask them, what is that in your hand? Hey, but what do you have right there? You said you got power. Then use what you got. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. You sitting there praying and saying, Lord, I'm waiting on you to get rid of this, Lord. You got to step in and God said, no. What is that in your hand? If you got power, why do I have to bring down your strongholds? You pull them down. Y'all getting quiet here. I wish I could get about 37 of you to slap somebody a half five and tell them, neighbor, you got power. You pull them down. What you waiting on God to do? He gave you power. You sitting there and I found out a whole bunch of folks just lazy and use God as an excuse to do nothing. I'm waiting on God. No, you ain't God waiting on you. God wants you to live be free. You're bound by this stuff. Scared to move forward. Scared to move. Listen, the devil is so diabolical. He'll plant that seed in your mind and sit back and watch that seed grow. And here you are with all of this potential in you and can't even get up and put one foot in front of the other because he's got you paralyzed with fear. How in the world with all of that power you got, all of that anointing, all that shout you've been doing, all of that Bible you've been reading, and here you are scared to exercise faith in God. The devil is a liar. God has not given us the spirit of fear but he gave us what power love and a what a sound mind that's what God gave you a sound a whole a sound mind God didn't give you a fractured emotion 
I gave you a sound mind. And the enemy is trying to, y'all getting quiet now. The devil's trying to take your sound mind. I ain't never seen so many saints confessing. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Really? How you let the devil disturb your peace like that? I'm not going to let the devil plant those seeds in my mind. God wants me to live free. He wants me to be free from depression. Lord, depressed saints come to church, can't even lift their hands and say hallelujah. Too tired to stand up and give God the glory. Just depressed. Can't even keep your mind on the word of God because you got so many troubles waiting on you at home. Listen, you ain't at home. You're in the presence of the Lord. And while you're here, you ought to refuse to allow the devil, amen, to take your mind to those carnal places. The devil is alive. While I'm in church, I'm going to enjoy God. I'm going to get filled up all over again. And when I get out of here, whatever's waiting on me outside I'll face it with some joy with some strength and with some power I'm not going to be depressed and speaking in tongues at the same time <laughs> sitting up there can't hardly get out the bed in the morning what happened to you listen now I know there's going to be days because I've had them when I'd have rather slept the weekend and just Woke up Tuesday or something. <laughs> but you got to refuse to allow the devil to have that kind of victory. Amen. See, this thing is not about feeling. And I want you to understand this. When it comes down to serving the Lord, it's not about whether you feel like it or not. That has nothing to do with the service you give to God. As a matter of fact, sometimes you have to give what is called a sacrifice of praise. Uh -huh. A sacrifice of praise, amen, is a testimony against the enemy that I don't care what I'm in. I don't care how I'm hurting. I don't care what I got going on. I'm going to praise him anyway. And it has nothing to do with feeling because even if I don't feel like it, I'll praise him just because I can. So it's not about that, but God wants us to live free, not just free from depression. God wants us free from sickness. Do you know the enemy will try to use sickness as a stronghold against us? Lord, we got work to do. How are we going to do that job if the enemy got all of us afflicted? Lord, it didn't seem like now the devil is where he was in the book of Job. He done tried us with what we had and that didn't work. Now it seemed like he went back to God and said, all right, God, skin for skin. All that a man have will he give in exchange for his life. Seem like that's where we are now. Hey Amen. Everybody, look like everywhere you turn, somebody's sick over here, sickness over there. Uh, somebody's in the hospital. Uh, the devil's afflicted somebody. Listen, that ain't nobody but the devil. You've got to learn how to use the faith that God gave you. Hey Amen. To rise above that uh, and tell the devil you're a liar. <clears throat> you're not going to stop me. I'm still going to testify. I'm still going to sing. I'm still passing in our church. I'm still going to church. Amen. At the moment that you allow the enemy to use sickness to stop you then what does that say about your faith? But you've got to learn how to persevere. The Bible declares we endure hardness as a good soldier. He would love to use that sickness as a stronghold. But I come to tell you tonight, the Lord want to set you free. Yeah. Yes, he does. God, amen, is going to use the faith that you have in him as a conduit to send hell in your way. And listen, I don't care. And you know what I've seen God do? God can leave the sickness there, but take the symptoms away. Y'all getting quiet here. And folk that you think ought to be laying on their back is up shouting and praising God. And the doctors say they still got it, but they just refuse to let the enemy have the victory in their life. Touch somebody and tell them, neighbor, I'm pulling down strongholds and imagination. Depression and sickness 
But then, too, the devil wants to bind you with poverty. Now, you know, when you start saying stuff like that, everybody thinks that you're one of those, uh, you know, prosperity preachers. And what you mean God want to deliver? God don't want me bound by poverty. God don't want you bound by poverty. Do you know who you are? Look at the person next to you. Don't say nothing. Just look at him. That, that's a king's kid. That is a child of the king. King's kids don't do what everybody else do. King's kids don't go around with holes in their clothes. Boy, y'all getting quiet on me tonight. Now, I ain't saying everybody going to be a millionaire. Everybody ain't going to be a hundred thousandaire. Some people won't have $10,000 airship. But you're still a child of the king. Or oh, touch somebody and tell them I might not be rich. But I got millionaire tendencies. <laughs> Y'all getting quiet. What, what, what is a millionaire tendency? That means I can get what I want when I want it. Y'all ain't sick. Can I preach to somebody here? God don't want you pound by poverty. The devil is a liar. I once was young. But now I'm old. And I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. I'm a king's kid. I wish I would ride the system. Boy, some of y'all got mad when I said that. I wish you would find me riding the system. Yeah, there you go talking about people on welfare. I ain't talking about nobody on welfare. Because I told you if times got bad enough, I'd be right up there in Walmart swiping that card, putting my code up in there. All them taxes I pay, if I need something, you better know I'm going to get it. Me? Please. Kobe, Chad, TK, we all have baskets. Uh, well, that just mean I paid for this stuff up front. <laughs> the government paid me back. I, this is my money. I'll use it if I have to. And if you have to use it, nobody's downing you for using welfare. What I'm telling you, don't let welfare become a strong. Boy, y'all getting fired. I know people sick and don't want to go back to work because they're going to get their check cut off. Look at y'all ain't saying nothing. I want God to heal me. Just not right now because I'm getting a check every month. Oh, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on up off of that stuff. Amen. Ask God to touch your body. Give you the strength to go back to work and work for yourself. Why in the world would you sit up there and not want God to heal you? You could go back and make $2,900 a month, but you'd rather sit up at the house and get five and six hundred dollars worth of free groceries. The devil is a liar. Come on, God said uh, he doesn't want us pound by poverty. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here because we got a good, good father uh, that knows what we need. Uh, and how can you tell people God is good uh, if he can't even feed his own kids? Everybody ain't going to be rich. But I'm not going to be bound by the spirit of poverty. Who said that just because you save, you got to make choices every month? Light bill or water bill? Rent or medicine? Why do you have to make those choices every month? Can't God, y'all getting quiet here. You know what God said? He said the cattle on a thousand 
Hills belong to who? To God. God said if I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. And you wouldn't know nothing about it. You know why? Because all of your needs will still be supplied. Who was that talking to me the other day? He was telling me when they grew up, they had no idea they were poor. All they knew is they were eating something every day. You know, the old folks used to cook and save the grease. <laughs> they done tricked you, done put some of that grease on the tray like that meat you had last night. Biscuits with grease poured on the top of them taste like meat. All right, they, they tricked you. And now that you grow up, you're trying to think back and say, you know we were poor. <laughs> but you didn't know it then. Y'all getting quiet. And if your mom and your daddy could have you poor and not even know it, then don't look at your bank account because God can take care of all of your needs. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You know after you pay your bills every month, you may not have a million dollars left over. Amen. And before you got saved, you had more month than you had money. But now that you're saved, paying your tithe and giving your offering, you know what I love about God? God can take the 90% and stretch it a whole lot further than I could the 100 Lord have mercy. You know it ain't nobody but the Lord got you surviving like this. How in the world huh? with what they paying people now can you afford a car and a house? Huh? Touch somebody and tell them it ain't nobody but God. Huh? Nobody but the Lord huh? got you living good. Huh? Got you eating every day. Huh? And they still ain't giving you a raise. Huh? But God said that's alright. Huh? If they won't give you more money huh? I'll give you more favor. Huh? And you get notices in the bank. Huh? And the mail saying, don't pay your bill this month. Huh? Y'all getting quiet here. Huh? Cut somebody huh? and tell them, neighbor, huh? I'm going to save my cash huh? and spend my favor. <laughs> Lord, every now and then, you get one of them notices from the light company saying, you don't have a bill this month. Thank you, Jesus. Water bill, dude. Don't worry about it this month. You don't have a bill. Listen, God's got a million and one ways of blessing you. And the devil wants you to think you can't have nothing. You save and you're a child of God and you got to be scraping. Listen. Listen. Uh-uh. 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 How you complaining now about gas? Didn't God give you the car? Now, would he give you a car if he couldn't give you gas to put in it? Y'all getting quiet? Like the children of Israel, getting out there after all that God did for them. Amen. After all God brought them through, all the miracles that he performed, and they had the nerve to ask, can God? Oh, the devil is a liar. You done got in a bad place, and now you looking up talking about can God. Look at somebody and tell them it's not can God. Tell them it's God can. Now unto him that is able. Lord, I thought I was going to have a few of you. Go help me talk about this able God. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or Above all, you can ask or think. So that means you've got to keep your mind in a place where you can continuously think on a higher thing. Oh, the devil want to hold your mind hostage to every trial that you're in. But God wants you to live free. Can I say this to you? And I don't want you to take this the wrong way. God wants you to be free from mental disorder. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. God don't want you pulling your hair out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
If you done paid all that money to have them put it in, you're going to pull it out. The devil is a liar. Come on now. God wants you to live free. He wants you to keep your mind stayed on him. They had a term they call paranoid schizophrenic. God wants you free. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? They, 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 they term some mental conditions as bipolar. That, that, that means you operate at two extremes. They call that the manic depressant. So uh, sometimes you're at the manic phase where you're, you're real active and, and then you're at the depressive phase where you don't feel like moving and you can go from being real happy to being real sad at a moment's notice. But God wants you to live free. Are you hearing me? It's nobody but the devil that's trying to take your life on this roller coaster. But I come to tell somebody tonight that God wants to set you free. God wants you to live better than that. The devil's trying to frustrate your mind. Got you acting like you don't know whether you're going or coming. But he said, I'll keep you in perfect peace. If you'll just keep your mind mind stayed on me. The devil wants you to lose it. But the devil is a liar. Look at somebody and tell them we can't afford to lose our mind. Because we're going to need our mind. When it's time to shout trouble's over. We're going to need this mind. When God starts moving on our behalf. The devil wants you living like you're not in control of you. But God wants to set you free. Let me hurry tonight. From every stronghold that will rob you of the freedom that God has given you. And that's why the enemy wants to do it. He wants to keep you bound. So he sends lying thoughts. Lord have mercy. He sends lying thoughts to your mind. To convince you that God's will is synonymous with your present circumstance. And that's why people say, well, if, this, if I got it, then maybe this is just God's will for my life. That's a lie. He wants to convince you that what you got is God's will for you. Because if you think it's God's will, why would you fight it? If you think that being sick is God's will, why would you seek to be healed? If you believe that God's will is for you to be impoverished, then why would you seek something other than God's will? That devil is a liar. I come to tell you, God didn't create this world and all this beauty in it for everybody else. So God going to give it to them, but you're his child and he's going to keep. The Bible said no good thing will he withhold from the upright. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. God wants you to live a good life. Yes, he does. I told you. God wants you to live like you belong to him. Now that don't mean you can wear thousand dollar pair shoes and all that kind of stuff because that, that, that don't make you a king's kid and especially if you had to uh, 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 skip paying your rent to buy it. Lord, you rebuking the devil on some of this stuff and it ain't the devil. Some of this stuff is your foolishness. No, they can, ain't nobody saying nothing now. You're just foolish. It, 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 was, it was $500. Child, that's too much. Go back next week, 20% off. Ooh, I got to have it. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I don't care if it's on sale. If you ain't got the money to buy it, it's not a blessing. They'll mark it up $100 and give you $50 off and you think, oh, I just got to have it. 
And you're in poverty. That's not because the enemy trying to keep you there. You're suffering as an evildoer. But he says, <laughs> that if you allow the enemy to plant that thought in your mind, it'll spring up and cause you to operate in fear rather than faith. And as the people of God, our focus is not on operating in fear. It's not on what we can't do. Our faith has always got to look to the fact that God has the power to do whatever I need him to do. And he can even now meet me at the point of my need. I can do all things through Christ. It's not about what I lack. It's about what he brings to the table. So I'm not going to be saved and operating in fear. I'm going to operate in faith. And everything that tries to keep me from operating in faith only comes from the devil. So here what the Bible says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal, they're not fleshly, they're not earthly. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. In other words, the weapons that God gives us, their greatest enemy is a stronghold. But God said they can pull it down. Now the enemy is trying to erect a wall in your mind. Something that makes believing God seem impossible. Something that makes holding on look impossible. But the Bible said the power that God gives us is given for the pulling down of strongholds. What kind of lying thoughts has the devil been placing in your mind? What has the enemy said that's contrary to the word of God, but you can't seem to get over it? Sometimes the devil will challenge the word of God before you get back to your house. The preacher just preached, you just shouted, you just agreed with it, and that's what faith is. Faith is co-signing what God has already said. But before you get back to your house, the enemy has already laid out the challenge. And now it seems like everybody else got blessed, but you were just praying. And the devil said you went through the prayer line. They laid hands on you. You thought you felt good. But now look at what you got. It was all for nothing. And it's right there at that moment that you got to decide, what am I going to do? Am I going to believe what God has said? Or am I going to focus on everything that's going wrong? Because it's so easy, brothers and sisters, to identify everything that's wrong. It's so easy. It's hard for people to pick out the good parts of you. But it's so easy to identify everything that's wrong. And that's what the devil wants you to focus on. He wants to focus your attention on everything going wrong and make you feel like God has done nothing for you lately. That's a stronghold. But look at what else Paul says as I close. He says not only are there strongholds, but there are also imaginations. You know what an imagination is? It's something made up. And some of the things that we feel like we're fighting and that we're battling with, this is not even based in reality. The enemy created that situation and now your mind is hung up on something that the devil just made up. Some of the stuff, if you just stop and think about it, it don't even make sense. But he made it up. Got you sitting up in church looking at people and they ain't thinking about you. Amazed. Boy, y'all getting quiet now. And I told you, the devil will put you in the midst of what's called a self-fulfilling prophecy. And you don't even realize that what happened, you caused it to happen. And then when it happened, you felt validated because I knew it was going to happen. 
you come to church thinking everybody gonna treat you funny. So you come in with one of your eyebrows way up in the air with an attitude and all that. And then folk look at you and think that you just got an attitude. I bet not bother her. Maybe she got some on her mind. And then when they don't speak to you, I knew they wasn't gonna speak. They ain't nobody. Really? You just became <laughs> a self-fulfilling prophecy. You in a battle with somebody that don't even know they're in a battle with you. Boy, y'all getting quiet. That's how she always trying to dress like, like I dress and trying to do this. She always, try, every time I get my hair done, here she come with the same hairstyle. What? And here we are fighting fights and it's all made up. Watch him when he preach. He gonna look at me. Watch, watch, watch him. He gonna, he gonna look right over here at me when he preach. I'm telling you, every time that's why I'm leaving this church next Sunday. If you do it two more times, I'm gone. <laughs> Who am I supposed to look at? on now. It's all made up. It's an imagination. How in the world are you in a competition with somebody that don't even know they're supposed to be competing? And got you wasting time. That you could be using to do something constructive for the kingdom. But you busy fighting with somebody that don't even know they're supposed to be punching back. Strongholds and imaginations. And you'd be surprised at how many people are sitting in church battling in their mind. With either a stronghold or an imagination. I can't tell you how many times I had to talk people out of leaving because they felt like I had some against them. Imaginations. Imagination. Pastor, have I done something to you? Did I tell you you've done something to me? Because you know I'm the telling kind now. But the enemy tells people all the time that the pastor got something against me. And everything that happened in church is the pastor's fault. And the devil will have you sitting right out in the pews blaming the pastor for something he ain't have nothing to do with. Imaginations. But he said you have to cast those down. You pull down strongholds because that's what the enemy has erected. But you cast down imaginations because that's something that's concocted in the recesses of your own mind. Strongholds. Imaginations. They'll attack the one area of your life that you need to be clear and that's your mind. But if you can pull that down and not allow the enemy to lay cockatrice eggs in your head And you can move forward in God. I remember a story of, 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 of a woman who was sick. And I've told this before. She happened to be the, uh, the sister of one of the greatest preachers uh, in recent times. And the doctors gave her absolutely no hope. Told her to prepare to spend the rest of her time in bed. Gave her uh, uh, no hope. Told her it was over. They had done all that they could do. Uh, there was no possibility of saving her life and just... You know how they tell you, get your business straight. And, and she heard all of this. And, and, and she said she was almost ready to give in to the seeds that the enemy planted in her mind. And she ended up having nursing care 24 hours a day. She couldn't get up out of the bed, couldn't go to the bathroom by herself. She couldn't, couldn't feed herself. You know that's a miserable place to be. When you get to where you need people uh, around you to do even those private things that that, that you know you would always desire 
to do for yourself. She couldn't, couldn't get a drink of water out the kitchen. She was helpless and handicapped. She couldn't lift a spoon to her mouth, she said. And her brother came to see her one day and he walked in to see this frail shell of a woman that she had become as a result of this long-lasting sickness. And she said while he was standing there, he said out loud in the room, don't tell me that God did this to my sister. And she said right then, even though she was without strength, couldn't get up, could barely move, could barely talk, when she heard him say that she determined in her mind right then, I am not going to let this seed of doubt take root in my mind and sometimes the enemy will come in and use some of the most unlikely of people to try to cause you to doubt what God has said but listen I'm like Paul I don't care who or even an angel from heaven come telling me anything other than what God have already told me I'm not focusing on that let that be a curse and she says she refused to believe that. And after a while, once she started focusing in on what the Lord has said, she said she started gaining strength in her body. And one day while she was laying there, strength hit her body. And she got up, jumped up at the bed, and ran through that and went to the kitchen. She said, I just refuse to allow the enemy to plant a seed or a stronghold in my mind. And you know that's what the devil would do. He'll try to do that, but tonight, family, I want to let you know that no weapon, if you'll stand up and take a stand for God, no weapon formed against you can prosper. You have the ability to move past this. You just have to determine, I'm not going to allow this. To keep me down. I'm not going to let this put me in the bed all day. I'm not going to let this cause me to pull my hair out. I am not going to allow this to keep me from trying. I'm going to move beyond this. It'll only prosper if you let it. So tonight, everything is going to start with a thought. Everything will start with a thought. And if the enemy can, he'll plant a seed so heavy on your mind that no matter how hard God pleads with you through the word of God, if you're not willing to pull down that stronghold, you'll be nothing better than sitting in the atmosphere. There are a lot of people. Now, some people are going to have the victory. Some people are going to shout. And other people are going to hear it and they'll still be in the same situation this time next year. Because the Bible said they did not mix it with faith when they heard it. I can preach all day, but if you cannot push beyond that stronghold, if you cannot determine to believe God in the face of whatever it is, then my faith for you will do you no good according to your faith. Be it unto you. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, if thou canst believe and don't doubt in your heart, you can speak to a mountain and tell a mountain to get out of your way. Now, either we're going to believe this or we're not. Either we're going to hold to this word or we're not. He said, not even a mountain can stand before you. I want you to stand. And sometimes our situations stand in front of us like giants. But through our faith in the power of God, every giant and every mountain can still come down. But you have to determine not to allow the enemy to set up residence in your mind. Gauge it. What is your thinking like now? 
Because everything starts with a thought. What kind of thoughts are becoming more and more frequent now? Are you finding yourself struggling with the idea of walking away from God? Is that something that's constantly on your mind? Just leave and walk away. If that's something that's always on, why is that so prevalent now? The reality is if you don't hurry up and get control over that, then soon it's going to be a stronghold. It's going to be something that you can hardly seem to wipe out of your mind. You'll battle with that in your sleep. And if that's you, I want you to come to this altar. Somebody needs to pray with you real quick. Because everything starts with a thought. But if you allow that to linger in your mind, thoughts have a way of becoming actions. But tonight, you can pull that down. If you find yourself thinking crazy, you can stop that. Why do you let the devil take your mind to that place? Come on, let God purify it. The Bible tells us that we ought to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. It all starts in the mind. And if there's one coming, they're coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Come on. The altar is for the saints. Hallelujah. Come on. They're coming. They're coming. If there's another, if you need to be saved or if you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, I want you to come. Come on. Hallelujah.